Hi everyone and welcome to FlossTube number 48. In today's video you're gonna see all of the crafting I've been done for the past three plus weeks and yeah I want to start off by saying I'm really really sorry that last week's video was very much sped up. I didn't listen back to the video after I did all of the changes that I usually do and one of them is speeding up the clips because I can sometimes talk a little bit too slow. However, uh, I am going to stop speeding up the videos and if you think I am too slow, there's also always that little cogwheel in the corner where you can actually either slow me down or speed me up a little bit. So hopefully that can help with that in the future. I'm just not gonna add anything because I had to re-upload that video. So if you were there for the first 24 hours, you would have said, seen a very very sped up version of me if you weren't there you just would have seen a re-upload so yeah uh, I have done a lot of cross stitching it has been three weeks uh, mainly because uh, I actually have been sick again because my body is constantly sick because I have an autoimmune issue yay but yeah so I thought I record now because next weekend I will be moving my brother and I will most likely don't have the energy to record that video on the Saturday so uh, yeah let's jump into it I want to say thank you to anyone who is a returning viewer it warms my heart that you want to spend some time with me and I also want to say hi to anyone who's new my name is Marika I come from Stockholm Sweden where I live with my boyfriend and my two cats and this is a channel mostly about cross stitching so let's just get through them we're gonna go through the projects as I have been stitching them because that makes more sense for me so yeah the first uh, two projects I have to show you is uh, two f new starts, finishes and fully finishes. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Um, I have been stitching uh, two little Mill Hill kits. Uh, when I showed you all of the Mill Hill kits that I had uh, added to my store, uh, I really kind of looked at the little ones and I fell in love with the Papa rooster and mama hen they're super adorable they also are colored in such a way that is very similar to the easter decorations that we have had in my home with my parents but also with my grandparents so i thought these would be a perfect moving in gift for my brother and his girlfriend they are moving into hopefully their forever home which is my grandparents old home so first we have papa rooster he is this adorable and very, very, very colorful rooster. And it's so sad that the shyness of those beads aren't really showing up here on the on the frame, but they are like, it's gorgeous. It's super fun. Also, it has a little treasure over there. Um, but otherwise, yeah, he's su super adorable. And the second one is uh, Mama Hen. Uh, which again she's also really really gorgeous she's a little bit more muted but yeah it would have been even greater if the little chicks had been three because that would fit their family even more now I have done what I do with most of my Mill Hill kits especially those who are ornaments in some shape and form and that is I just put a little piece of ribbon that I folded over to make um, a little kind of hole here to put a piece of twine in. Twine is easier to uh, set on these smaller ones because it's easier to hang in a tree. And also it has the added uh, thing that they will hang with where the tree comes out instead of hanging on the side of, of the tree branch. So yeah, uh, I also just put some felt, some coordinating felt on the background. The felt, uh, the ribbon and the twine does not come into the in the kit. It's just from my own stash. But yeah, that was all about those two and now they are going out to my brother and his girlfriend. I, If I would have waited to record this after for next weekend, I wouldn't have them to show you. So that's also one of the reasons why I'm, I'm showing now. The second project is also a finish. It's a, it's not a fully finish. It's just a finish, and that is the cozy cafe. So yeah, here is the cozy cafe. 
This is a project by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It's called Cozy Cafe. Um, it is shirted in the stitch on a 14 count. I have stitched this on a 16 count uh, Dirty Ida by Swaygart. There we go. Um, when I touched this the last time, I asked, or showed this the last time, I asked uh, what year I should uh, end it with, if I would, should use uh, 2024, 2014 or uh, 2011. And uh, most of you said 2011 because that was when me and Christopher met and I kind of agree. So I added 2011 at the bottom. Um, and then I also stitched up these little little guys. It's the pumpkin spice latte and the strawberry lemonade. I then washed and ironed the piece and then I added all of the beads. There is a lot of beads in this and it was a little bit hard because when I started stitching on this the reason why I chose the 16 count was because I wasn't aware that there were beads because I didn't read through the pattern. And then I found like little symbols that looked like you were back stitching around uh, some stitches and then I found out that that was actually where the beads were going to get. So uh, yeah, um, it w I was a little bit confused but then um, I picked up the beads and I have now finished it. So yeah, that is my um, third finish of the year I think. I haven't had that many finishes of the year uh, until I came to this month. Well I have the finishes of the little Easter designs that I still haven't fully finished and I hope to fully finish them before Easter. Uh, this is a th this happens all the time with me. Anyhow when I had finished the uh, Cozy Cafe uh, I knew it was time to doubt to work on my whip goes because I wanted to make sure that I touched my whip goes early in the month so that I'm not uh, chasing to finish them at the end. I hate stressed stitching. Stitching should be just comfy and just stressing to get something finished before the end of month is uh, that's just not me. So I decided to go through my whip go drawers and the whip go drawers I got this month is uh, the Win uh, Christmas House One by RDC and uh, the Gamer by uh, Doll Dollmaker Medusa. So, uh, I uh, my whip go is 1500 stitches uh, or four days, whatever comes first, and uh, I got 1500 stitches done on the Christmas house one. So I'm still working in the house part here, so the mostly the windows. Uh, I'm really enjoying how it comes, uh, comes out and I'm really looking forward to next row when I start getting into the house. It's going to be confetti, but it's also going to uh, give a lot of details that I just don't have here. But yeah. Um, there's there's some I think this is like a, a tiled window or a colorful window that's coming in here so it's gonna be nice to see that coming out but yeah that is uh, Christmas house one it is stitched on 25 count white even weave and um, I have gridded it with some fishing line which is one way uh, the fishing line is a little bit harsh to the thread so you can get a little bit of of like damage on the threads but if you work with shorter lengths like I do that is not an issue. Uh, the next project then is the other whip go which was the Gamer or Gamer Nouveau uh, which I bought as a kit from Gecko Rouge uh, but they have discontinued this instead you can find it as a pattern over at Dollmaker Medusa's uh, Etsy shop. So that is where you can, where the link down below, I link everything and the link down below is go there. Um, I have stitches with a kit and the kit was a 25 count, um, easy count, even weave by Swigart. So this is what it is. This one is a little bit harder to show because I have it um, rolled up vertically because it's a lot of fabric. But yeah, um, I am working on this part of it and uh, I actually put in almost 2,500 stitches on this. Um, I was 
this was when I started to get a little bit exhausted and started to get sick. So I just decided that I am going to continue stitch on this. It's a very comfort stitch. So I just continued uh, until my brain started wanting other things. Um, I am hoping, I don't think Whipgo will get me there. So I think I need to stitch more stitches than Whipgo. But I'm hoping to finish this top row before the end of year so that I get somewhere on this because I bought this kit I think back in 2022 so um and I don't think I started it until 2023 so I I do need to uh, stitch on it more to get somewhere I really want to have this on the wall where we have our gaming section uh, so next project uh, I have them all lined up on my table uh, is a uh, ATC swap so um, I will link down below the Instagram. Uh, Heather is the one who is hosting them. She hosts ATC swaps and regular swaps. The ATC swaps is basically just a ADC with some stitching on and the regular swap is something more fully finished, a stitching that is more fully finished plus a little bit of a treat. Um, so this is the ATC swap. Uh, I am going to make a little ATC. Uh, ATC is artist trading card. So basically cards the same as a playing card. It's two and a half by three and a half inches big. And then you create art in small form. And that card you then trade with other people. And in the swaps, I'll send one out and I will get one back. Today's uh, or this turnaround theme is eclipse slash space. So I picked up, I picked up my favorite space fabric, and this is all I have left of it. I'm a little bit sad about that, but hey, that's how it is. And uh, I stitched this, which is a black hole, I think, or some kind of other things, a little galaxy or or something. I think it looked cool. Uh, I found this pattern in a um, uh, issue 233, I think. Well, it will be linked down below. It is the Wallow Cross Stitching Magazine. Uh, it is the September 2023 edition. And um, it has a library with space in it. Uh, and I picked, I stitched this because I really, really liked how it looked. Um, and I really like this fabric. It is. Uh, one of the blacks that I've been using to color up uh, turns a little bit of purple and I haven't, uh, I don't think I have any of that black left as a dye, but I'm gonna look into it because I really, really like this color. This is stitched on a 32 count linen, uh, which is glittery. And I can tell you, I have so much glittery uh, fabric to dye up both linen and even weave and uh, Ida. So um, you will see if you like, if you like opalescence or iridescent fabric, uh, hop on over to my, to my store. I also have reduced all the prices of my fabrics. So if you have looked at my fabrics before and felt that they were too expensive, they are all reduced. So you can uh, go there and look at them if you want to. Anyhow, the way I'm going to do it, I am probably just going to cut this out in some shape and form. I haven't really decided yet how, and then I'm going to put it on this paper. I don't know what this paper is. Uh, I have lost the top sheet, um, but it's like th this is a paper pad or more cardstock pad because it's very thick, thick sheets uh, with a lot of really cool designs. And I thought this one that has the, these cast, cast, ah, castellations, can, uh, words, you know what I mean, in silver, constellation, that's the word, uh, in silver uh, on this. I, I will definitely, I will keep that in because that's how I do it, but I'm also going to swear at myself <laughs> while I'm at it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's in, in silver and it's actually quite beautiful. I really like this paper. So I'm going to use this to kind of back the card and then I'm going to add the design and then I'm going to add uh, something more. I have a lot of craft supplies, so it might be a little bit of a like little stars or something. But yes, uh, that was my next finish. It's not a fully finish, but a finish that was all the stitching I'm going to do for that. This is like 869 stitches. I... 
that's a lot of stitches. So the next project, which also is a finish, because I've been finishing stuff here all the way around, is also a start and it has a whole story. And that is, um, I got the World of Crochet magazine, the new one, uh, in the app, because I subscribe to it in the app, so I get it digitally. And while looking through that, while I was stitching, while I was stitching on this, I, I took a break and I looked through the magazine and an ad popped out at me, and that was the ad for the Costage Gold Birds collection. And the collection magazines that, uh, it is uh, published by the same publisher as the World of Cross Stitching. The collection magazine, are basically a collection of stitches usually from older magazines like the world of cross stitching publishers have had so many different magazines and I have been subscribed to most of them one time or another they started with like little magazines and I don't I think those small then became the cross stitch crazy but I'm not sure they also had a cross stitch card shop magazine the Royal Cross Stitch magazine, they also had Cross Stitch Gold magazine. So they had a whole collection of magazines. And they have closed down everyone except the World of Cross Stitching. However, they do uh, occasionally throughout the year um, do collection magazines like Favorites magazines or in this case Cross Stitch Gold collection, which is basically bigger designs that they have collected from other they still have the licensing for them. Anyhow, because there is quite a lot of older designs in there, I've seen them stitched before. And, but I never stitched them myself. I actually haven't stitched anyone in that magazine. And I love birds, so I was like, give me that magazine. I ordered it in paper form because I couldn't find it digitally because I didn't go into the favorite magazine app or into the special section on the World of Cross Stitching app. When I finally got into that section, I saw that it was digitally, I also bought it digitally because I prefer them digitally. Uh, you can actually download them as PDFs from, that magazine, uh, from the app, so you can use the PDF, and I can use the PDF inside my Markup RX. So that kind of works for me, how I do things. Anyhow, I fell in love with multiple designs in there, but the one I decided that I wanted to do right now uh, was the Decorative Crane by um, Lucy Le Ter. Oh, now I forgot what, what her name is. Leslie Ter, I think. Leslie Ter. And the reason for that is because my friend uh, Emily, she stitched this back in 2015 and I loved it when she was stitching it and I knew I wanted to stitch it myself. And at the same time as I saw this, I wanted to stitch it, I also got an order in from a customer that ordered a fat quarter of the light taupe 32 count even wave. And all of those things combined, I'm like, this This is how I'm going to stitch it. So instead of stitching it on white, I have stitched it on light taupe, 32 count from Sway Guard. Let's see if I can get it all in the picture. And this is what came out. So I have stitched it as sharded, except for changing the fabric. And I accidentally started using two threads of the metallics. So I ended up using that uh, on the whole, so the this little uh, moon or sun and the centers and the flowers are the E3821 metallic uh, from DMC and they sharded it as one over one, I did it two over one. One over one had probably made it much much easier, but yeah. That is it finished. So I'm gonna frame this in either in an 8x8 frame or uh, on a like a thicker canvas, like painter's canvas. Um, I think I have an 8 I know that there is 8x8s. I don't know if I have one at home. Uh, but yeah, thinking about adding it on top of that instead. So we'll see. Yeah, so... Uh, that was all of the finishes I have done. Do have one more whip. And this also have a story, so let's let's bring the story. While I was stitching on the uh, on the um, decorative crane, I'm in this like go from project to project to project, and I'm kind of having the project going over. 
I knew I would have some kind of stitchy hangover from finishing the crane because I did almost 9,000 stitches in five days. I never stitched this fast ever, ever. That crane went really, really fast and I knew you usually get a pretty bad hangover when things go too fast. Um, but I was watching some floss tube and I was wa watching Vera Stitchy Corner. Um, I found her when she shouted me out for the winter cabin that I fin finished last year and uh, she was showing off that and then she showed off the uh, cafe shop by the mansion which I also which I started uh, during Christmas after I finished the um, the, the um, oh, winter cabin that's the word I'm a little bit woozy in my brain today, I have, I have a little bit of migraine. Anyhow, so uh, I I saw her, she had stitched it and I was like, yeah, I need to pick that up again. I need to get something done and I got a lot done. So I've been stitching on this for the past three days. Uh, what I've done, basically, I had finished up to that orange line, I think, just above, uh, above these little... Uh, awning what they are called anyhow uh, so I'd finished up there and I've done a little bit of the green I've done the the upper brown line which is up here as that's the outline and that was all yeah uh, all of the French knots to that part because if you look at that it's so many French knot every little white dot is basically a French knot there's so many but anyhow I have done all of this and the outlines and the French dot and now I'm working uh, from here and down to make a piece so I the way I work with dimensions is that I do the back stitching and the French knots as I go however I do have some rules around that one is I would never add a um, back stitch line if I have cross stitches that butts up towards that line that needs to be stitched. So I always need to stitch all the stitches around a back stitch uh, row uh, because otherwise uh, the when you do go and do the row of stitches below it can actually obfuscate your back stitching. So that is one of the rules. So I try to work in sections. So I do one section and when that section is done I go in and do all of the back stitching that isn't lining up directly to a, a row of stitches and then uh, I did all of the French knots because otherwise I would go crazy. Uh, I haven't counted how many French knots it is in here. I don't think I want to count it but I think it's around 40 to 50 just at the top uh, of this piece that I've done so far. Um, maybe 30 but still there's a lot of them and it's gonna be that all the way down. So yeah that is the um, that is the last progress on this. So yeah, that was all of my stitching projects for uh, this period that I've been stitching on. Uh, we're gonna go into plans. So one of the plans is I'm gonna continue stitching a little bit on this, I think. Uh, I still feel that I have uh, a day or two in me to give this a little bit more stitches. I I'm really I really want to get into the the start of the windows maybe start the door to get some solid stitching on this. Um, it is like minus like negative Celsius degrees here, and it did snow last week. Uh, it didn't stay, but it did snow, so it is colder weather. Uh, so this feels a little bit more like I can stitch on it right now. Soon we're coming into spring where it's warmer weather and I think I don't want to stitch on this then. So I'm going to take these days that I can to stitch on these. The other thing is that the numbers for Whipgo came out and um, I don't remember the numbers. I think it was 18 and 21 but do not count yeah 18 and 21 I have it written actually on a paper just down there anyhow 18 and 21 for me both are the mini sunset owl so this month I'm gonna get uh, or April I'm gonna get 3,000 stitches on it but I might actually uh, get a head start on it so maybe I do one or day, two days more of this until I feel that enough is enough and then I pick up the 
uh, Mini Sunset Owl and start doing those stitches because Mini Sunset Owl is one of those projects where I can't really do a thousand stitches a day. Uh, I usually get around 500 stitches and that's it because it is so confetti heavy. So uh, I might be, be working on that, try to get a header start on that. And then I have all of the Santas I still haven't stitched. I have three so far, three of the Milhun Santas that I haven't stitched yet. So those will also come out in um, here in, in the beginning of April. I will most likely be back uh, the first weekend in April, which is like the 5th, 6th, the 6th I think of April, Saturday. Um, if not, I'm, I'm, I will be back the, the week after. It all depends on energy levels. I have a really bad migraine attack at the moment. Uh, I had some really, really scary aura symptoms on Sunday evening. Um, and until I realized that I had my Botox treatment next week, uh, I, I was started to be afraid that I was having some kind of uh, infection in my nervous system. But no, it's just my migraines. But yeah, so that will... Um, I will probably need a little bit more rest than I usually do but otherwise yeah that was all of my stitching and all my stitching plans I hope you enjoy them I do have a little bit of a crochet I want to show you and then I will let you go uh, it's not very my life hasn't been very exciting in the past three weeks so we're, we're not gonna go into we're not gonna have a half hour um, part that is, is talking about life but anyhow this is my latest crocheting project that I'm working on Yay! Um, I'm gonna see. Um, I'm gonna remove the crocheting needle. It is in in mid in mid go. But yes, this is a triangular uh, mother uh, gra granny square shawl. So it's super simple. It's just like doing half a granny square. I really love working on it. I've been working on this since September, I think September October. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, it is, so far it is, um, two different uh, balls of yarn that is put together. So the first two, three, I think it's two. Yeah, it is probably two. So the first one is this like, uh, orange, pink and purple and black. It's Halloween yarns from Hobby. And the second one is actually this yarn, which is a orange, black and grey. I don't know if it's gonna be enough but I have a couple of balls of yarn that are um, that have a pink instead of the orange uh, so they're basically the, the same color scheme as this but you replace the orange with pink um, and it's from the same collection so I think I'm going to um, add that to the shawl too because I want it to be big. I want it to be like a cozy warm shawl. I have a friend that I'm giving this away to. I was hoping to be done before the end of the year. I wasn't and then or I, I had made it and I finished it with just one ball of yarn and then I realized I felt it was too small so I added a adding a second ball of yarn right now and then I want to add a maybe even add a third it kind of depends on the size finished size in the end but yeah that is the project I'm working on right now when it comes to crocheting I also have like the head of a horse for my brother's stepchild um daughter she wanted a amurigimi horse so I'm uh crocheting that and I also I am knitting on a pair of socks for my boyfriend so yeah that was all of my craftiness for this week. I will see you after Easter. If you are celebrating Easter, I hope you have a great Easter. If you're not celebrating Easter, I hope you have a great weekend. <laughs> so yeah, um, I will see you in uh, two to three weeks or one and a half to two and a half weeks. Uh, I should be able to get the videos up on my regular scheduled time coming up here in the future. But yeah, uh, I hope you have an awesome, awesome couple of weeks and I'll see you later. Bye!